Dustin Poirier may be gearing up for another fight soon. Judging by a recent social media post from the former interim UFC lightweight champion. In an Instagram update, Poirier hinted at his return to action with the caption, looks like it's back to work, alongside a photo of himself in the gym. Poirier's last fight was at UFC 299 earlier this month in Miami, where he defeated Benoit Saint Denis. Prior to that, he had an eight-month layoff following a knockout loss to Justin Gaethje at UFC 291 and another eight months before that with a submission win against Michael Chandler at UFC 281. Despite his recent success, Poirier hasn't been receiving quick turnaround fights over the past two years. Following his wins over Conor McGregor, UFC seemed uncertain about his next move, and Poirier admitted that he accepted the Saint-Denis fight because there weren't many other options available. Now, however, it seems Poirier has more options on the table. One potential opportunity is a lightweight title fight at UFC 302 on June 1st in New Jersey. Reigning champion Islam Makachev has been pushing for a title defense, and the Newark card needs a big main event for pay-per-view. With other lightweight contenders unlikely to be available after UFC 300 in mid-April, Poirier could be a suitable option. Fans have been speculating about this possibility, and perhaps UFC matchmakers are taking it seriously. However, we'll have to wait for the official announcement to confirm any details. Ian Machado Gary is relishing his time in Sao Paulo following his seventh consecutive victory in the Octagon, a unanimous decision win over Jeff Neal at UFC 298. However, Gary's focus is fixed on his next target, Colby Covington. Looking ahead to UFC 303 scheduled for June 29 in Las Vegas, Gary is eager to face Covington in the Octagon. Expressing his readiness to fight Covington anywhere and anytime, Gary emphasized his desire for Covington to step up and face him. Despite Covington's recent loss to Leon Edwards at UFC 296, Gary sees him as a formidable opponent worthy of his attention. Gary's motivation to fight Covington stems from his desire to rectify the disparaging remarks made by Covington about him and his family. Confident in his abilities, Gary believes that Covington stands no chance against him, regardless of his skill level. Expressing disdain for Covington's behavior and rhetoric, Gary is determined to retire him from the sport. He envisions a fight where he leaves Covington defeated and humbled, signaling an end to Covington's career. While Gary dreams of fighting in Brazil someday, he acknowledges that Covington's previous comments about the country would make it unlikely for him to accept such a bout. Nonetheless, Gary remains optimistic about fighting in Brazil in the future, representing both Ireland and Brazil with pride. As the potential matchup with Covington awaits confirmation, Gary issued a stern warning to his opponent, declaring his intentions to end Covington's career and leave him defeated in the octagon, much to the delight of Brazilian fans. UFC on ESPN 54 took place Saturday at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City and featured 13 fights. Of the 26 competitors who fought on the card, 21 have been suspended by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board due to injuries or potential injuries sustained in their bouts. Monday, MMA Junkie acquired a full list of the medical suspensions. Ten fighters were handed indefinite suspensions, including headliner Manon Fioro, and main card participants Dumas, Chris Weidman, and Bruno Silva. During Weidman's middleweight bout, repeated eye pokes to Silva led to a technical decision. Consequently, Silva awaits clearance from an ophthalmologist for his left eye, while Weidman awaits clearance from a CT scan for his head. Main event Victor Manon Fioro also requires medical clearance following her dominant win over Aaron Blanchfield. Fioro, who was swiftly taken to the hospital after her victory, may be in line for a flyweight title shot, was suspended indefinitely pending orthopedic clearance of right arm and suspended for 60 days with no contact. Aaron Blanchfield, suspended for 30 days due to facial lacerations. Joaquin Buckley, 
suspended for seven days with no contact. Vicente Luque, suspended for 45 days with no contact following a TKO. Chris Weidman, suspended indefinitely pending CT scan head clearance, and suspended for 30 days with no contact. Bruno Silva, suspended indefinitely pending ophthalmologist clearance for his left eye and suspended for 30 days with no contact. UFC star Max Holloway has suggested that Mark Coleman should present the BMF title to the winner of his upcoming fight against Justin Gaethje at UFC 300. While Holloway and Gaethje are set to battle for the BMF championship, recent attention has been focused on Mark Coleman due to his heroic actions. Coleman made headlines after being airlifted to the hospital following his brave act of saving his parents from a house fire, resulting in him being hospitalized for smoke inhalation. His courageous actions have earned him widespread recognition as a hero. In a recent interview, Holloway proposed the idea of having Coleman present the BMF title at UFC 300, citing Coleman's recent ordeal with his dog and his bravery as fitting for the occasion. Holloway expressed this. The only correct answer is Mark Coleman. Especially with what he went through recently and his dog waking him to go save his stuff, and he goes in and runs for his dog. The guy's a G, that's a real-life BMF. That would be sick if he did it. It would be an honor to get him to do it. The belt is the belt, is cool, it's whatever. The things that can come with the belt can be life-changing, so we'll see what happens. But I'm more excited that I get to share the octagon with Gaethje. It's amazing. It's amazing to share the octagon with a future Hall of Famer in him. Title or no title, being able to fight him is one of the best things I'm looking forward to. Matt Brown expressed frustration with the recurring issue of eye pokes in the UFC, particularly highlighting Chris Weidman's recent fight against Bruno Silva at UFC Atlantic City. Brown emphasized that the problem lies in the design of the UFC gloves, which make it challenging for fighters to form a fist naturally, leading to inadvertent eye pokes during fights. Brown revealed that fighters often spend significant time stretching and manipulating their gloves before fights to make them more flexible and easier to close into a fist. He criticized the current glove design, which requires fighters to exert force to close their hands and suggested that making it easier to form a fist should be a priority. Brown criticized the decision, to award Weidman a technical decision victory, instead of declaring the fight a no contest, given that the eye pokes directly influenced the outcome. He called for better officiating and suggested a rematch between Weidman and Silva to rectify the situation. In terms of solutions, Brown advocated for redesigning the UFC gloves to resemble those used in other organizations like Pride, which feature a natural curve and make it easier to form a fist.